waiting the Prophet's coming, but they disbelieved in him when he was sent. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, And when there came to them, meaning, the Jews, a book from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 250, meaning, the Quran that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down to Muhammad, confirming what is with them, meaning, the Torah. Further, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Although aforetime they had invoked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for coming of Muhammad in order to gain victory over those who disbelieved. Meaning, before this messenger came to them, they used to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to aid them by his arrival against their polytheistic enemies in war. They used to say to the polytheists, A prophet shall be sent just before the end of this world and we, along with him, shall exterminate you, just as the nations of Ad and Iram were exterminated. Also, Muhammad bin Ishaq narrated that Ibn Abbas said, the Jews used to invoke Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the coming of Muhammad in order to gain victory over the Oz and Khazari before the Prophet was sent. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent him to the Arabs, they rejected him and denied what they used to say about him. Hence, Mu'ad bin Jabal and Bishr bin al Barah bin Marar from Bani Salima said to them, O oh, Jews, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and embrace Islam. You used to invoke Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the coming of Muhammad when we were still disbelievers and you used to tell us that he would come and describe him to us. Salam bin Mushkin from Bani Anadar replied, He did not bring anything that we recognize. He is not the Prophet we told you about. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then revealed this ayah about their statement. And when there came to them, the Jews, a book, this Quran, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala confirming what is, with them, the Torah, and the Injil, Gospel. Abu al Aliya said, The Jews used to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send Muhammad, so that they would gain victory over the Arab, 251, disbelievers. They used to say, O oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Send, the prophet that we read about, in the Torah, so that we can torment and kill the disbelievers, alongside him. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Muhammad and they saw that he, was not one of them, they rejected him and, envied the Arabs, even though they knew that he, was the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hence, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. 252. Then when there came to them that which they, had recognized, they disbelieved in it. So let the, curse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be on the disbelievers. 290 How bad is that for which they have sold their own selves, that they should disbelieve in that, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed, the Quran, grudging, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should reveal of his grace unto whom he, wills of his servants. So they have drawn on themselves wrath upon, wrath. And for the disbelievers, there is disgracing, torment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, How bad is that for which they have sold their own selves, that they should disbelieve in that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed, the Quran, Mujahid said that the ayah, how bad is that for which they have sold their own selves, means. The Jews sold the truth for falsehood and hid the truth about Muhammad. As Sadi said that the ayah, how bad is that for which they have sold their own selves, means. The Jews sold themselves. Meaning, what is worse is what they chose for themselves by disbelieving in what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to Muhammad instead of believing, aiding and supporting him. This behavior of theirs is the result of their injustice, envy and hatred. Grudging that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should reveal of his grace unto whom he wills of his servants. There is no envy worse than this. Therefore, so they have drawn on themselves wrath upon wrath. Ibn Abbas commented on this, Ayah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala became angry with them because they ignored some of the Torah and disbelieved in the Prophet that he sent to them. I, Ibn Qasir, say that. The meaning of, and they drew on, themselves, is that they deserved and acquired, multiplied anger. Also, Abu al Aliya said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala became angry with them because of their disbelief in the angel and Isa and he became 253 angry with them again because they disbelieved in Muhammad and the Quran. Similar was said by Ikrama and Qatada. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, 254. And for the disbelievers, there was disgracing torment. Since their disbelief was a result of their transgression and envy, which was caused by arrogance, they were punished with disgrace and humiliation in this world and the hereafter. Similarly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Verily, those who scorn my worship, that is do not, invoke me, and do not believe in my oneness, they will surely enter hell in humiliation. 4060. Meaning, disgraced, degraded and humiliated. Imam Ahmad narrated that Amr ben Shu'ab said that, his father said that his grandfather said that the Prophet, said, the arrogant people will be gathered on the day of resurrection in the size of ants, but in the shape of men. Everything shall be above them, because of the humiliation placed on them, until they enter a prison in Jahannam called Balas where the fire will surround them from above. They shall drink from the pus of the people of the fire. 291 And when it is said to them, the Jews, believe in what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent down, they say, we believe in what was sent down to us. And they disbelieve in that which came after it, while it is the truth confirming what is with them. Say, O Muhammad to them, why then have you killed the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala aforetime, if you indeed have been believers? 292 And indeed Musa came to you with clear proofs, yet you worship the calf after he left, and you were Zalaman. Although the Jews denied the truth, they claimed to be believers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, And when it is said to them, 255. Meaning, the Jews and the people of the book. Believe in what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent down to Muhammad, believe in and follow him. 256. They say, We believe in what was sent down to us. 
meaning, it is enough for us to believe in what was revealed to us in the Tower and the Injil, and this is the path that we choose. And they disbelieve in that which came after it. While it is the truth confirming what is with them. Meaning, while knowing that what was revealed to Muhammad. It is the truth confirming what is with them. This means that since what was sent to Muhammad conforms to what was revealed to the people of the book, then, this fact constitutes a proof against them. Similarly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Those to whom we gave the scripture, Jews and Christians, recognize him, Muhammad, as they recognize their sons. 2146. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said next, Why then have you killed the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, aforetime, if you indeed have been believers? This means, if your claim that you believe in, what was revealed to you is true, then why did you kill the prophets who came to you affirming the Torah's law, although you knew they were true prophets? You killed them simply out of transgression, stubbornness and injustice with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's messengers. Therefore, you only follow your lusts, opinions and desires. Similarly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Is it that whenever there came to you a messenger with what you yourselves desired not, you grew arrogant? Some you disbelieved and some you killed. 2. 87. Also, as Sadi said, in this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chastised the people of the book, say, O Muhammad to them, why then have you killed the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala aforetime, if you indeed have been believers? 257. And indeed Musa came to you with clear proofs. Meaning, with clear signs and clear proofs that he was the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The clear signs or miracles mentioned here are the flood, the locusts, the lice, the frogs, the blood, the staff and the hand. Musa's miracles also include parting the sea, shading the Jews with clouds, the manna and quails, the gushing stone, etc. Yet you worship the calf. 258. Meaning, as a deity instead of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during the time of Musa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala statement. After he left. After Musa went to Mount Tur to speak to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Similarly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, And the people of Musa made in his absence, out of their ornaments, the image of a calf, for worship. It had a sound, as if it was mooing. 7148. And you were, Zalaman. Meaning, you were unjust in this behavior of worshipping the calf, although you knew that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Similarly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, And when they regretted and saw that they had gone astray, they repented and said, If our Lord have not mercy upon us, and forgive us, we shall certainly be of the losers. 7149. 293 And, remember, when we took your covenant, and we raised above you the mount, saying, Hold, firmly to what we have given you and hear our word. They said, We have heard and disobeyed. And their hearts absorbed the worship of the calf because of their disbelief. Say, Worst indeed is that which your faith enjoins on you if you are believers. The Jews rebel after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took their covenant and raised the mountain above their heads. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And, remember, when we took your covenant and we raised above you the mount, saying, Hold firmly to what we have given you and hear our word. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminded the Jews of their errors, breaking his covenant, transgression, and defiance, when he raised Mount Tur above them so that they 259 would believe and agree to the terms of the covenant. Yet, they broke it soon afterwards. 260. They said, We have heard and disobeyed. We have mentioned the tafsir of this subject before. And their hearts absorbed the worship of the cat. Abdur Ratzak said that Mamar narrated that Kiptada said that it means they absorbed its love until its love resided in their hearts. This is also the opinion of Abu al Aliyah and R. Rabi ben Anas. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala statement. Say, worst indeed is that which your faith enjoins on you if you are believers means, worse yet is the manner in which you behaved in the past and even now, disbelieving in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's ayah and defying the prophets you also disbelieved in Muhammad, which is the worst of your deeds and the harshest sin that you committed. You disbelieved in the final messenger and the master of all prophets and messengers, the one who was sent to all mankind. How can you then claim that you believe while committing the evil of breaking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's covenant, disbelieving in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's ayah and worshipping the calf instead of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? 294 say to them, if the abode of the hereafter, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is indeed for you especially and not for others of mankind, then long for death if you are truthful. 295 but they will never long for it because of what their hands have said before them, that is what they have done. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is aware of the Zalaman. 296 and verily, you will find them, the Jews, the greediest of mankind for life and even greedier than those who ascribe partners to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of them wishes that he could be given a life of a thousand years. But the grant of such life will not save him even a little from due punishment. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is seer of what they do. Calling the Jews to invoke Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to destroy the unjust party. Muhammad bin Ishaq narrated that Ibn Abbas said. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to his prophet. 261. Say to them, if the home of the hereafter with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is indeed for you especially and not for others of mankind, then long for death if you are truthful. 
meaning, invoke Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring death to the lying camp among the two Muslims and Jews. The Jews decline this offer by the Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But they will never long for it because of what their hands have sent before them, that is what they have done. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is aware of the Zalaman, polytheists and wrongdoers. Meaning, since they know that they recognize you, and yet disbelieve in you. Had they wishing death that day, no Jew would have remained alive on the face of the earth. Moreover, ad said that Ibn Abbas said that. Then long for death, means. Invoke, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for death. Also, Abdur Ratsak narrated that Ikrimah said that Ibn Abbas commented, then long for, death if you are truthful. Had the Jews invoked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for death, they would, have perished. Also, Ibn Abi Hadam recorded Sayyid ben Jubair saying, that Ibn Abbas said. Had the Jews asked for death, one of them, would have choked on his own saliva. These statements have authentic chains of, narration up to Ibn Abbas. 262 further, Ibn Jrir said in his tafsir. We were told that the Prophet said, had the Jews wished for death, they would have, died and seen their seats in the fire. And, those, who invoked such curse against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's messenger, would have found no families or property had, they returned to their homes. Similar to this, I is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's statement in Surah al Jumu'ah. Say, O Muhammad, O you Jews, if you, pretend that you are friends of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to the, exclusion of, all, other mankind, then long for, death if you are truthful. But they will never long, for it, death, because of what, deeds, their, hands have sent before them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows, well the Zalaman. Say, to them, verily, the death from which you, flee will surely meet you, then you will be sent, back to, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the knower of the unseen and the, seen, and he will tell you what you used to do. 62 6 to 8. So they claim that they are Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's sons and loved, ones and said, only those who are Christian or Jews, shall enter paradise. 263 Therefore, they were called to invoke Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to destroy, the lying group, be it them or the Muslims. When the Jews declined, everyone was sure of their wrong, for, had they been sure of their claims, then they would have, accepted the proposal. Their lies were thus exposed after, they declined the offer to invoke the curse. Similarly, the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called a delegation of, Najm's Christians to curse after he refuted them in a, debate in which they demonstrated stubbornness and, defiance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, then whoever disputes with you concerning him, Isa, after, all this, knowledge that has come to, you, that is Isa, being a servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and, having no share in divinity, say, O Muhammad, come, let us call our sons and your sons, our, women and your women, ourselves and, yourselves then we pray and invoke, sincerely, the curse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon those who lie. 361. When the Christians heard this challenge, some of them, said to each other, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you do such with this, Prophet, none of you will have an eye that blinks. This is when they resorted to peace and gave the jizya, tax, in disgrace. The Prophet accepted the jizya from them and sent Abu Bayta bin al Jarrah with them as a trustee. Similar to this meaning as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's command to his Prophet to proclaim to the polytheists. Say, O Muhammad, whoever is in error, the most gracious Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will prolong him in it. 1975. 264 meaning, whoever among us has deviated, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase and prolong his deviation. We will mention this subject later, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala willing. The Mamhala, invocation to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to destroy the liars, was called a wish here, because every just person, wishes that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroy the unjust opponent who is, debating with him, especially when the just person has a, clear, apparent proof for the truth he is calling to. Also, the, Mamhala involves invoking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for death of, the unjust group, because to disbelievers, life is the, biggest prize, especially when they know the evil, destination they will meet after death. Disbelievers wish they could live longer. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said next, but they will never long for it because of what their hands have sent before them, that is what they have done. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is aware of the Zalaman. And verily, you will find them, the Jews, the greediest of mankind for life. Meaning, greedy to live longer, because they know their evil end, and the only reward they will have with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is total loss. This life is a prison for the believer and paradise for the disbeliever. Therefore, the people of the book wish they could delay the hereafter as much as possible. However, they shall certainly meet what they are, trying to avoid, even if they are more eager to, delay the hereafter than the polytheists who do, not have a divine book. And, even greedier, than those who ascribe partners to, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of them wishes that he could be given a life of, a thousand years. 265. But the grant of such life will not save him even a little, from, due, punishment. Muhammad bin Ishaq narrated that Ibn Abbas, commented. Long life shall not save them from torment. Certainly, the polytheists do not believe in, resurrection after death, and they would love to, enjoy a long life. The Jews know the humiliation, they will suffer in the hereafter for knowingly, ignoring the truth. Also, Abdur Rahman bin Zaid bin Aslam said, The Jews are most eager for this life. They wish, they could live for a thousand years. However, living for a thousand years will not save them, from torment, just as Iblis, Satan, long life did, not benefit him, due to being a disbeliever. 266. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is seer of what they do. 
meaning, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what his servants are, doing, whether good or evil, and will compensate, each of them accordingly. 297 Say, O Muhammad, whoever is an enemy to, Jibril, Gabriel, let him die in this fury, for indeed, he has brought it, this Quran, down to your heart, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's permission, confirming what came before, it, that is the tower and the Injil, and guidance and, glad tidings for the believers. 298 Whoever is an enemy to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his angels, his, messengers, Jibril and Mikhail, then verily, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, an enemy to the disbelievers. The Jews are the enemies of Jibril. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Say, O Muhammad, whoever is an enemy to Jibril, Gabriel, let him die in this fury, for indeed he has, brought it, this Quran, down to your heart by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's, permission, confirming what came before it, that is the, Tower and the Injil, and guidance and glad tidings for, the believers. Imam Abu Jafar ben Jirir Tabari said, the scholars of Tafsir agree that this ayah, 2, 97-98, was revealed in response to the Jews who claimed that Jibril, Gabriel, is an enemy of the Jews and that Mikhail, Michael, is their friend. Al-Bakari said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, whoever is an enemy of Jibril, let him die in this fury. Ikrama said, J-I-B-R, Mik and Israf al-Min, worshipper, while, ill means, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anas ben Malik said, when Abdullah bin Salam heard of the arrival of the Prophet in al Madinah, he was working on his land. He came to the Prophet and said, I am. 267 going to ask you about three things which nobody knows except the Prophet. Oh what will be the first portent of the hour? Oh what will be the first meal taken by the people of paradise? Oh why does a child resemble its father, and why does it resemble its maternal uncle? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's messenger said, Jibril has just told me the answers. Abdullah said, he, that is Jibril, among all the angels, is the enemy of the Jews. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's messenger recited the ayah, whoever is an enemy to, Jibril, Gabriel, let him die in this fury, for indeed, he has brought it, this Quran, down to your heart. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's messenger then said, the first portent of the hour will be a fire that will bring together the people from the east to the west. The first meal of the people of paradise will be the caudate lobe of the liver of fish. As for the child resembling his parents, if a man has sexual intercourse with his wife and his discharge is first, the child will resemble the father. If the woman has a discharge first, the child will resemble her side of the family. On that Abdullah bin Salam said, I testify that, there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you are the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Abdullah bin Salam further said, O oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's messenger, the Jews are liars, and if they should, come to know about my conversion to Islam, before you ask them, about me, they will tell, lie about me. 268 The Jews came to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's messenger, and, Abdullah went inside the house. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's messenger, asked, the Jews, what kind of man is Abdullah bin Salam? They replied, He is the best among us, the son of the best among us, our master and the son of our master. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's messenger said, What do you think if he would embrace Islam? The Jews said, May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save him from it. Then Abdullah bin Salam came out in front of them saying, I testify that none has the right to be worshipped but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thereupon they said, He is the evilest among us and the son of the evilest among us. And they continued talking badly about him. Ibn Salam said, This is what I feared, O oh, Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Only Al-Bakari recorded this hadith with this chain of narration. Al-Bakari and Muslim recorded this hadith from Anas using another chain of narration. Some people say that Il means worshipper while whatever word that is added to it becomes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's name, because Il is a constant in such conjunction. This is similar to the names Abdullah, Abdur, Rahman, Abdul Malik, Abdul Qudus, Abbas, Salam, Abdul Kafi, Abdul Jalil, and so forth. Hence, ABD is constant in these compound names, while the remainder differs from name to name. 269 This is the same case with Jibril, Mikhail, Azrael, Israfil, and so forth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Choosing some angels to believe in over others is disbelief, like choosing some prophets over others. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded. Say, O Muhammad. 270 Whoever is an enemy to Jibril, Gabriel, let him die in his fury, for indeed he has brought it, this Quran, down to your heart by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's permission. Meaning, whoever becomes an enemy of Jibril, let him know that he is Ra'al Qudus who brought down the glorious Dhikr, Quran, to your heart, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by his leave. Hence, he is a messenger, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whoever takes a messenger as an enemy, will have taken all the messengers as enemies. Further, whoever believes in one messenger, is required to believe in all of the messengers. Whoever rejects one messenger, he has rejected all of the messengers. Similarly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Verily, those who disbelieve in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messengers and wish to make distinction between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messengers, by believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and disbelieving in his messengers, saying, We believe in some but reject others. 4150. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decreed that they are disbelievers, because they believe in some prophets and reject others. This is the same with those who take Jibril as an enemy, because Jibril did not choose missions on his own, but by the command of his Lord. And we, angels, descend not except by the command of your Lord. 
1964, and 271. And truly, this, the Quran, is a revelation from the Lord of all that exists, which the trustworthy Ru, Jibril, has brought down upon your heart, O Muhammad, that you may be one of the warners. 26, 192, 194. Al Bukhari reported that Abu Huraira said that the Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Whoever takes a friend of mine as an enemy will have started a war with me. Therefore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala became angry with those who took Jibril as an enemy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Whoever is an enemy to Jibril, Gabriel, let him die in this fury, for indeed he has brought it, this, Quran, down to your heart by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's permission, confirming what came before it, meaning, the previous books, and guidance and glad tidings for the believers, meaning, as guidance to their hearts and bringer of the good news of paradise, which is exclusively for the believers. Similarly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Say, it is for those who believe a guide and a healing. 4144. And, and we send down of the Quran that, which is a healing and a mercy to those who believe. 1782. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then said, Whoever is an enemy to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his angels, his messengers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stated that whoever takes him, his angels, and messengers as enemies, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's messengers include angels and men, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses messengers from angels and from men. 2275. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Jibril, Gabriel, and Mikhail, Michael. 272. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned Jibril and Mikhail specifically, although they are included among the angels who were messengers, only because this ayah was meant to support Jibril the emissary between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his prophets. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also mentioned Mikhail here, because the Jews claimed that Jibril was their enemy and Mikhail was their friend. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informed them that whoever is an enemy of either of them, then he is also an enemy of the other as well as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We should state here that Mikhail sometimes descended to some of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's prophets, although, to a lesser extent than Jibril, because this was primarily Jibril's task, and Israfil is entrusted with the job of blowing the trumpet for the commencement of resurrection on the day of judgment. It is recorded in a sahih that whenever the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would wake up at night, he would supplicate, O Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Lord of Jibril, Mikhail and Israfil, creator of the heavens and earth and knower of the seen and the unseen, you judge between your servants regarding what they differ in, so direct me to the truth which they differ on, by your leave. Verily, you guide whom you will to the straight path. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala statement. 273. Then verily, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is an enemy to the disbelievers. Inform the disbelievers that whoever takes a friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is an enemy, then he has taken Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as an enemy, and whoever treats Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as an enemy, then he shall be Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's enemy. Indeed, whoever is an enemy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then he will lose in this life and the hereafter, as stated earlier. Whoever takes a friend of mine as an enemy, I shall wage war on him. 299 And indeed we have sent down to you, manifest ayah and none disbelieve in them but, falcon, those who rebel against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's command. 2100 Is it not the case that every time they make a covenant, some party among them throw it aside? Nay. The truth is, most of them believe not. 2101 And when there came to them a messenger, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is Muhammad, confirming what was, with them, a party of those who were given the, scripture threw away the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala behind their, backs as if they did not know. 274, 2102 They followed what the Sharadin, devils, gave out, falsely of the magic, in the lifetime of, Suleiman, Solomon. Suleiman did not disbelieve, but the Sharadin, devils, disbelieved, teaching men magic and such, things that came down at Babylon to the two, angels, Herod and Merit. But neither of these two, angels, taught anyone, such things, till they had said, We are for trial, so, disbelieve not, by learning this magic from us. And from these, angels, people learn that by which, they cause separation between man and his wife, but they could not thus harm anyone except by, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's leave. And they learn that which harms them and profits, them not. And indeed they knew that the buyers of it, magic, would have no share in the hereafter. And how bad, indeed was that for which they sold their own, selves, if they but knew. 275. 2103 And if they had believed and guarded themselves from evil and kept their duty to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, far better would have been the reward from there, Lord, if they but knew. Proofs of Muhammad's prophethood. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And indeed we have sent down to you manifest ayah, and none disbelieve in them but falcon, those who rebel against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's command. Imam Abu Jafar ben Jarir said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's statement, And indeed we have sent down to you manifest ayah, means, We have sent to you, O Muhammad, clear signs that testify to your prophethood. These ayah are contained in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Quran, which narrates the secrets of the knowledge that the Jews possess, which they hid, and the stories of their earlier generations. The book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also mentions the texts in the books of the Jews that are known to only the rabbis and scholars, and the sections where they altered and distorted the rulings of the Torah. 
Since Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned all of this, in his book revealed to his Prophet Muhammad, then, this fact alone should be enough evidence for those who, are truthful with themselves and who wish to avoid, bringing themselves to destruction due to envy and, transgression. Further human instinct testifies to the truth that, Muhammad was sent within the clear signs that he, brought which he did not learn or acquire from mankind. 276 Ad Dawik said that Ibn Abbas said that, And indeed we have sent down to you manifest, ayah, means. You recite and convey this book to them day and, night, although you are an ummy, unlettered, who never read a book. Yet, you inform them of, what they have, in their own books. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stated, that this fact should serve as an example, a clear, sign and a proof against them, if they but knew. The Jews break their covenants. When the Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was sent in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminded the, Jews of the covenant that they had with him, especially, concerning Muhammad, Malik bin Asaf said, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never made a covenant with us about, Muhammad, nor did he take a pledge from us at all. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then revealed, is it not, the case, that every time they make a, covenant, some party among them throw it aside? 277. Nay. The truth is, most of them believe not. Al Hassan al Basri said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's statement means, there is not a promise that they make, but they, break it and abandon it. They make a promise, today and break it tomorrow. The Jews abandon the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and practice magic. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells, and when there came to them a messenger from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is Muhammad, confirming what was with them, a party of those who were given the scripture threw away, the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala behind their backs as if they did not, no. As Saudi commented on. And when there came to them a messenger, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is Muhammad, confirming what was with, them. When Muhammad came to them, they wanted to, contradict and dispute with him using the, Torah. However, the Torah and the Quran, affirmed each other. So the Jews gave up on, using the Torah, and took to the book of, Asaf, and the magic of Herod and Merit, which indeed, did not conform to the Quran. Hence Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's statement, as if they, did not know. Also, Qatada said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's statement, as if they did not know, means, they knew the truth but abandoned it, hid it and, denied the fact that they even had it. Magic existed before Sulaiman, Solomon. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells, they followed what the, Sharadin, devils, gave out, falsely of the magic, in the lifetime of Sulaiman, Solomon. Sulaiman did not disbelieve, but the, Sharadin, devils, disbelieved, teaching men magic. As Sadi said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's statement, they followed what the Sharadin, devils, gave out, falsely of the magic, in the lifetime of, Sulaiman, means. During the time of Prophet Sulaiman, 278 beforehand, the devils used to ascend to heaven and, eavesdrop on the conversations of the angels about what, will occur on the earth regarding death, other incidents, or unseen matters. They would convey this news to the soothsayers, and the, soothsayers would in turn convey the news to the, people. The people would believe what the soothsayers, told them as being true. When the soothsayers trusted the devils, the devils, started to lie to them and added other words to the true, news that they heard, to the extent of adding 70, false words to each true word. The people recorded, these words in some books. Soon after, the children of, Israel said that the jinns know matters of the unseen. When Solomon was sent as a prophet, he collected these, books in a box and buried it under his throne. Any devil, that dared get near the box was burned. Solomon said, I will not hear of anyone who says that, the devils know the unseen, but I will cut off his head. When Solomon died and the scholars who knew the truth, about Solomon perished, there came another generation. To them, the devil materialized in the shape of a human, and said to some of the children of Israel, Should I lead, you to a treasure that you will never be able to use up? They said, Yes. He said, Dig under this throne, and he went with them, and showed them Solomon's throne. They said to him, Come closer. He said, No. I will wait for you here, and if you do not, find the treasure then kill me. They dug and found the buried books, and Satan said to them, Solomon only controlled the humans, devils and, birds with this magic. 279 Thereafter, the news that Solomon was a sorcerer, spread among the people, and the children of Israel, adopted these books. When Muhammad came, they, disputed with him relying on these books. Hence Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's, statement, Sulaiman did, not disbelieve, but the, Sharadin, devils, disbelieved. The story of Herod and Merit, and the explanation that they, were angels. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, and such things that came down at Babylon to the two, angels, Herod and Merit. There is a difference of opinion regarding the story. It was said that al Qurtubi stated that. This, Ayah denies that anything was sent down to, the two angels, he then referred to the Ayah, Sulaiman did not disbelieve, saying, the negation applies in both cases. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then said, but the Sharadin, devils, disbelieved, teaching men magic and such things, that came down at Babylon to the two angels. The Jews claimed that Gabriel and Michael, brought magic down to the two angels, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, refuted this false claim. Also, Ibn Ajriya reported, that all Afi said that Ibn Abbas, said about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's statement, and, such things that came down at Babylon to the two, angels. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not send magic down. 280 also, Ibn Ajriya narrated that Arabi ibn Anas said about, and such things that came down, to the two angels. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not send magic down to them. Ibn Ajriya commented, 
This is the correct explanation for this. Aya, they followed, what the, Sharadim, devils, gave out, falsely, in, the lifetime of Sulaiman, meaning, magic. However, neither did Solomon disbelieve nor did, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send magic with the two angels. The devils, on the other hand, disbelieved and taught magic, to the people of the Babylon of Herod and Merit. Ibn Ajriya continued. If someone asks about explaining this, I in this manner, we say that. They followed what the Sharadim, devils, gave out, falsely, in the lifetime of, 